the first things that I noticed about Mongolia is you're, is you're flying to a different place across the world. You know, flying, we flew Salt Lake, San Francisco, San Francisco, Tokyo, Tokyo, Beijing, say two days in Beijing, then to Mongolia. So you feel like you've gone on complete other side of the world, which I guess you have, and you expect this foreign people. And what struck me was how familiar they were. How many faces of Mongolians were the same faces of people that, that I knew at home. Maybe wider cheeks, which is a Mongolian characteristic, but very similar people and similar personalities. I was amazed at how much, from American point of view, they had a similar personality. I think perhaps from the history of, of the Mongols conquering most of the known world at one time, kind of has that, you know, number one kind of chest bumping, bump that uh, personality that Americans have in a way. And the Mongols are a lot that way. They're, they're, uh, they're proud people but not an obstinate people, and they're, they're quite kind. I'd have people actually at times, just random people stop and say, you American? Yeah, come to my house for dinner tomorrow night. Here's my address. And you show up and they feed you. And they wouldn't ask anything from you. They just want to meet you. And they're a really a kind people. Now, there's you know, definitely some drunks there who are not as kind, but even then they're not too bad. You know, still my cookies kind of drunks, not, not really beat you up too much. Uh, but, uh, you know, the, the people were, you know, I still have many Mongolian friends and their, their maturity in, in the life and in gospel is really impressive. Uh, actually, I had, you know, dinner with a Mongolian gal I'd baptized uh, in San Francisco a few months ago. And, you know, as I'm talking about struggles I'm going through in my life, it was funny to sit down and, and to have this girl who was 15 or 16 at the time teach me. And that was, I felt the proudest of my mission at that point. Having th this person who, as I'm having struggles in my life, teaching me and giving me advice. And I was happy at that point realizing, wow, these are some amazing people that we taught. These are, you know, th these are not backwards people from the other side of the world. These are amazing children of God out there. And, uh, you know, they're, and they're lots of fun too. We, we had, uh, we play games all the time with missionaries. And one of the things we're trying to do is develop church families that didn't exist in their nuclear families. And they were so fun and engaging and, and uh, having parties and playing games and, and doing quirky things. Uh, one of the favorite games that we play was called uh, Potato, which was a volleyball game where you sat in a circle, you stood in a circle and you served, the, you served the ball to each other. If you made a mistake, you had to kneel down the middle. And as, you're, as they're serving around, one person suddenly spikes it and tries to hit you. If they hit you, they get the pleasure of hitting you with the volleyball. And you stay in the middle. If they miss you, they go in the middle with you. If they catch it, they get to come out and you go back in. As you play it until there's a pile there and you keep hitting with the ball. It's a fun game, a little rough, but uh, they loved it. you know. And, and, and they were fun playing that. And, and really an open venture some people. They, they have a sporting holiday every summer called Nadam, where there's wrestling and archery and horseback riding. Uh, but they're fun, but they do have a lot of customs, which we, we a, a lot of yoslos, uh, that we had to learn things you didn't do. So if you're walking on the street and you bump feet with somebody, you had to shake hands automatically. And I still do that today. Actually, you hit, you bump feet and it's, you shake their hand. Otherwise it's offensive. You don't sit with your foot up, which is a habit of me. You always have my foot up you see, because in a lot of ways it was a agrarian society and, uh, Step in a lot of manures. So your foot's up. You, you might show some things you you uh, may not want to show to them. But there was a lot of little customs here and there that we had to pick up. And you know, I'm sure we fed into quite a few people at the time. Uh, when you take things, you take things with two hands. You never reach up for one hand. You never point. You point at dogs. You point the full hand. So when I was teaching. One of the first things I was, you know, so I'm pointing the blackboard. My students are like, "No, you don't point. Why not? You don't. You full hand." You know, at the, you point to a dog, you don't point to a person, so open hand. And so even today, I'll either point with an open hand or actually take my pointer finger and point it back and use, you know, everything else to point. Uh, also, we were, as a teachers at least, you know, we'd have our students come up the board and we'd toss in the chalk. And like, no, no, you don't throw things at people. I don't know if that's changed or not. And we often joked because half the people you threw to couldn't catch. You know, they'd come by and bonk them in the head. But uh, there was things that 
would be perceived as doing to dogs, you didn't do it to people. So which are throwing things, pointing, things like that. Uh, so there was a number of customs to learn uh, that were often tricky to, to, to navigate. You didn't put your foot up on something. So I want to recall putting my foot up on, uh, I was at a store and there was kind of a little bar near the near the display case, my foot there to tie my shoe. And I felt a sharp hit in my leg and there was a cop out of a baton, he swatted my leg down, pointed to my leg. Like, oh, okay, you know, don't, don't do that. So there's uh, you know, a lot of customs, and even at the new year, for example, you would always greet the oldest person and they would put their hands out to you and you'd, you'd hold their hands up and lift their hands up, and you'd sniff their cheeks. And you, you know, I want to suck you know, uh, peaceful resting and you should greet them for the new year. So a lot of customs associated with those, with those kind of things. Uh, you, you never, you always eat something. If you go to someone's house, they offer you food, you eat. You put something in your mouth. It may even be at, a, uh, I was at someone's house and some neighbor came in and he sat down and waited, didn't have much to say. They brought him tea and they brought him some arl, kind of a milk curd. He took a bite of arl, took a small bite, put it down, set his piece and left. But he wouldn't leave until he ate something, and he took had to take a bite and would eat something. But we also learned kind of late in the game that if you clear your plate, they'll keep refilling it. So as much as you think you're being respectful by eating everything, they're going to keep giving you their food, and you may make them go hungry if you if you if you do that. So you know, and, and even then we were since we were so new to the country, there's a lot of things that we perceived as customs we just didn't know. And so I may be wrong on a few things. The customs may have changed, but I had once where I was with a bunch of scouts. I was an advisor to the scouts of Mongolia and I had a pair of scissors in my hands. I just kind of snip, 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 just kind of playing with them. They said, no, 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 don't do that. I'm like, okay, what custom could you possibly have about scissors? Because oh, it's just not safe. Oh, okay. Yeah, you got me on that one. Okay. You know, I, I, I put it down. But uh, there was a great, uh, there's, there's a beauty and simplicity to the people in, in the way they think. And one of my newer companions, who actually was a high school friend of mine, uh, he had just come to the country in the second group. I'm walking down the street, and there's uh, not uncommon to see older gentlemen squatting down uh, with a blowtorch, blowtorching a goat head, and then eating the meat off the goat head. You burn the hair off, and then you eat it. You know, to an American, blowtorching a goat head is a little odd. But uh, so he says, my companion says, can you ask him if I could take a picture of him? So you know, I says, you know, sir, can my friend take a picture of you? And this old man blowtorching a goat head, you think, you know? old kind of crazy gnarly guy and he looks up and he says this is the Mo this is Mongolia the uh, home of the Mongolian steep land of Genghis Khan the elk the sky the grasslands and you want to take a picture of a man cooking a goat head now go take a picture of something pretty yeah yeah I mean it was it was this great wisdom in this man you're like yeah that's that's a good point so that, that's interesting about the Mongolian people. Now, at the time, and even now still, they wear the traditional Mongolian gowns, the del. And men and women both wear these gowns, and uh, they come in different fabrics. They're beautiful. A lot of ornate trim on the collar. It's a high collar, more, uh, much higher than like a Mandarin collar might be in Chinese, and go all the way down with a, uh, either trim there or things called nostrics that fold up, go down your ankles. You have a large belt. At the time, the style was the larger, the better. better. Just wrap this belt was fabric, maybe 30 feet of fabric you wrap around as a belt and, and tuck it in. And uh, beautiful. And the, the, they still wear it today to, to church or to, you know, to baptisms, celebrations, or just on the street to school. Now, Western clothes have definitely moved in more, but the, the, the Dell is still a very well accepted uh, bit of clothing. I still wear mine around uh, for, for occasions as well in, in the U.S. But uh, so the traditions are still there in a lot of ways, which is neat about Mongolia where Yes, there's a lot of familiarity thing, familiar things about it, but it's also still traditional in a lot of ways.